Excitement is a cruel mistress these days. On one hand, you get yourself pumped to see a movie after seeing its epic trailer. On the other hand, it's 2023 and you realize you have a better chance of Kate Upton personally inviting you to Tahoe to motorboat her tits all weekend long. So when the trailer for Napoleon dropped, it had all the promise to be nothing short of f***ing epic. It felt like it was going to be the defining biopic you only get once in a decade. A movie that would be part of the same discussion as Spartacus, Lawrence of Arabia, Patton, and Braveheart. The preview to Napoleon will have you believe that you're watching a movie from the director of Gladiator, Blade Runner, and Alien. But the movie you get is from the guy who brought you Robin Hood, G.I. Jane, and Alien Covenant. <laughs> Napoleon was a charismatic leader with countless biographies written about him. His military tactics are still studied at West Point today. He managed to rise from humble means to crowning himself emperor. This is all fascinating subjects that would make a brilliant movie. Instead, Ridley Scott and screenwriter David Scarpa decided to make a movie based on Napoleon's Wikipedia page, but cut out all the interesting parts. Is this a movie about Napoleon's conquest or about his relationship with Josephine? The previews and the clips used to market the movie would have you believe it's the former, but the movie itself is the latter. A majority of the movie is how Josephine continuously cucks Napoleon and how that gives him a big sad. He tells her about his big sad, and she's sad that he's sad, but she's going to keep cucking him anyways. So he makes her the Empress of France. Take that, bitch! Okay, I do have to point out that within the first 20 minutes, the Siege of Toulon takes place. You do get to see Napoleon's horse get its chest meat blown out, so that was cool, but the siege is over as quick as it starts. We have to get back to what matters to Scott and Scarpa most. Napoleon is an awkward Bitch. As Napoleon drools over Josephine, the audience drools waiting for the movie to end. The cruel joke has gone on long enough. For the love of God, let the credits roll. This is the feeling you get within the empty theater. But this is only 40 minutes deep into the movie. Only two hours more to go. Dear God. There's more. No. Finally, something exciting happens. No, no, it's not like another battle or anything like that. Napoleon and Josephine are f***ing like rabbits. Okay, that is an exaggeration. Napoleon f***s Josephine like a rabbit while she quietly takes it, bored and waiting for him to finish. Is this an analogy for how Ridley Scott is f***ing his audience? Yes. Yes, it is. Jackhammering us further into boredom, we wait for the climax that is the end credits, desperate to find anything to keep us awake. Finally... Napoleon finishes. Unfortunately, the movie keeps going. Surely soon some detailed reflection of just how brave and bold the emperor born into poverty was. How resourceful he was on the political stage as much as he was on the battlefield. How was Napoleon able to achieve success after success when the numbers were stacked against him? How did he lose all that he gained? And both in relatively short periods of time. All of this goes unanswered. Ridley Scott's only answer on why Napoleon lost at Waterloo is due to the fact that he was an incel and the British army was far more organized and confident. Now, I'm not saying Ridley Scott being British might have set out to make Napoleon look like a bitch in favor of his home country. Wait a minute. I am saying that. It's the only takeaway one could have after watching Napoleon. History and tactical brilliance be damned, they made Napoleon look romantically retarded instead. All the other exploits were just some other junk. Case in point, the performance from Joaquin Phoenix can only be described as laced with morphine. Sometimes it would wear off and there would be a comedic outburst delivering lines unintentionally funny that will have you fall out of your seat laughing. Mel Brooks must have come out of retirement to help write gems such as this one. You think you're so great because you have boats! Every once in a while, Phoenix will let it slip and do some acting, oscillating out of his American accent into a fake British one. Clearly, Ridley Scott is too old to give a shit and correct this. Maybe he figured they'll fix it in post-production and then forgot all about it over an episode of Wheel of Fortune. Who knows? To sum up what the movie Napoleon was actually about is, shit, I got nothing. Historical drama should be viewed in the lens of something we can learn from the subject, but more importantly, what we should learn about ourselves. These films are rarely accurate for various reasons, such as story needs or time, but the right beats must be hit. If there is a melody playing throughout Napoleon, it is on mute. Character development is a foreign concept to writer David Scarpa. Napoleon is not an empathetic character in any act. We don't hate him. 
We don't love him. We don't understand him. His fears are summed up in Josephine. His only aspiration is to conquer. No other reason given. He loves France. The film has no reason as for why. He loves France almost as much as he loves that slut Josephine. Well, if you love France so much, maybe you should have married it, Mr. Fancy Pants. Aside from the 15 total minutes of battle sequences that have no real context nor stakes behind them, the best the film has to offer is the cinematography. Mainly because Darius Wolski found his favorite angle of Vanessa Kirby as she got railed by Joaquin Phoenix. And I have to admit, it was a favorite angle of mine as well. It's mostly that horrible angle that you see in porns, you know, where it's all balls and male ass just... Wolski's cinematography stands out specifically in the first scene where Napoleon meets Josephine. The low-key lighting setups mixed with practical lights from the candles help achieve a contrast between the subjects in a dark background. This reflects the neoclassism movement in art that was popular during Napoleon's reign. Basically what I'm saying is... Wolski might be the only one with competence working on this movie. Apparently, there is a four and a half hour extended cut ready to be released for Apple TV Plus next month. This might fix all of Napoleon's issues. To which I say, fuck off. Kingdom of Heaven only happens once in a lifetime. This little maneuver here treats movie theaters more like you pay a premium to see a glorified trailer on release. The real version is coming, guys. You just have to pay another $10 minimum. And in the time of streaming, and the more I think about it, this isn't really a far-fetched idea. I wouldn't be shocked if the marketing department behind Napoleon is attempting this strategy. Look at the video game industry selling incomplete games for 60 to 70 bucks a pop with the half promise that they might update their game to a condition they promised to begin with. Either show us the whole damn movie we paid top dollar for or go eat shit in the middle of a tire fire. Napoleon is about Napoleon and Josephine, but the powers that be knew that if they branded it as such a story, no one would come and watch the movie. It was a wasted opportunity by Ridley Scott. There are so many angles to take with one of modern history's more complex figures. Instead, there's a severe lack of care about the subject matter. What Napoleon deserves is an energetic director, not some paint-by-numbers veteran who hasn't made an entertaining film in almost a decade. If you're not interested in history, or performances, or character analysis, or spectacle, or plot, or subtext, Napoleon is the movie for you. On the other hand, I can't wait for Sofia Coppola's Josephine, where we will finally get the Napoleon movie we wanted. If you enjoyed this video, you go ahead and smash that like button. While you're done doing that, hit the subscribe button. And then, after that, share this with your friends, family, people you hate. Maybe you don't like my content and just... Want to waste somebody's time? Do it. Share it. Thank you. It is much appreciated. I'm out of here. That is disgusting.